on this WTSP Wednesday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. Evan Klosky and I are going to talk about the current situation with Jason Pierre-Paul. We're going to take a look at the playoff picture as we come out of the bye week. And then finally, we're back to predictions. And Evan is going to talk about his player of the game, his bold prediction, and his score prediction. All that and more coming up on this episode of the Locked On Bucks podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast brought to you by our good friends over at McDonald's. Proudly serving communities since 1965, McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I am loving it. I am James Yarko, joined as I always am on Wednesdays. Last week it was Friday, but we're back to a normal week. We're I'm back. Evan Klosky here from 10 Tampa Bay. You can find everything that I'm doing over at BucksNation.com. Make sure you're following along on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayArco underscore Bucks, at E Klosky, WTSP, and at Bucks underscore Nation. Evan, it was a nice relaxing weekend of football where I hated everything about fantasy football because it's stupid and it's dumb. But all the things that the Buccaneers do, do I... Tough loss. I lost by 35 and I went against Josh Allen. How does that happen? That's impressive. That's bad. It, yeah, it was it was brutal. Uh, but just about everything that we needed to have happen for the Buccaneers did happen outside of stupid James Conner and the Arizona Cardinals winning that game. Um, so we're gonna get into the into the Buccaneers standing. Coming up in segment two, talk a little bit about the upcoming playoff picture. But first, Jason Pierre-Paul sent out a tweet talking about the current injury that he is dealing with. And, and I felt, you know, this was the guy that you said needed to have the big second half of the year for the mm -hmm. Buccaneers to get that number one, number two spot in the playoffs. Uh, you know, he was the guy that you called. I called out Devin White. You called out JPP. Uh you know, these are the guys that, that need to step up. And Jason Pierre-Paul on Twitter today said, I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm just letting y'all know what it feels like to deal with uh, a torn rotator cuff. I'll be fine. They can't do it like me. That was in response to a tweet that he sent out saying, I'm barely getting any sleep with the shoulder injury. I've had my share of injuries, but this one by far the worst of them all. I already broke my promise to myself, so I'm going to thug it out until I can't. So he's saying this is, you know, the, the worst of, of all the injuries he has suffered and he's still battling through, he's still playing through it. What do you think this means for Jason Pierre Paul moving forward, a, a guy that he has two and a half sacks on the year. He doesn't practice because they need him for game days and he's battling through this kind of a, a temperature check here if, of, of your opinion. What does this mean for JPP moving forward? I mean, it's not good. You're getting a discounted version. It stinks because he felt the healthiest he's ever felt entering a season. And those are his words since his time with the Giants, maybe his like second year in the league. Um, it's troublesome because he's first off a superhuman that he can play with a torn rotator cuff. Uh, rotator cuffs. Now I'm no doctor. Okay, I just Google things and read. So let me let me just say that right now. But according to the interweb sources that uh, you know seem legit, they are legit. I'm just kidding. Um, it takes about four to six months to recover from rotator cuff surgery. And very rarely, unless it's minor, you can rehab the rotator cuff and be good to go. So it's, it's obvious that if JPP needs surgery, his season is over. So he is fighting to keep his season alive. He knows what's at stake for this team and where they want to go. And to his credit, I mean, he, he has shown flashes where – He's been able to disrupt plays here and there. 
he is not the same guy. He is on pace for, for seven and a half sacks. Um, and that's one of his lowest, um, you know, that's, and that's with the extra game, by the way. So that would be his lowest total since the 2016 season. And that was a season where he played 12 games and got seven sacks in it. You know, even in, in 2019, where he played 10 games, he had eight and a half sacks. Um, so this is, you know, it's also a contract year for him, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's really tough because he's, let's say he makes it to the Super Bowl. Having surgery after the Super Bowl would put him probably back week one on like the back end of that scale. Like he would, like he's probably going to miss some training camp time sort of deal. So, I mean, he's kind of personally, he's hurting himself a little bit because he's really sacrificing his body for the team, which is great to see. We don't, you know, we don't see that as often anymore in sports with contracts and all that stuff and people getting theirs. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder if you're going to see in the back half of the season more Joe Tryon and managing JPP's load. Certainly, if we get down to the end of the year and there are games where they can give JPP off, um, they should do it. You know, the Jets game comes to mind. Some of these matchups where you should be able to take care of business, but um, they need a they need a top two seed. So it's it's a it's a tough needle to thread. Yeah, I would throw out that Giants game, too, that they wouldn't need him, but he's not missing that game. There's yeah. zero chance. I He could miss this weekend against the Washington football team, and they would probably be fine. I, you know, I'll i get into my predictions later in the week, but I fully expect a very explosive Buccaneers team to face off against Washington, coming off the bye, coming off the tough loss. Um, so, yeah, you're you're 100% right. It's, it's going to be really difficult, and – you know, like you said, a four to six month recovery after a surgery. Let's just play the hypothetical hypothetical game really quick. Let's say the Buccaneers do make it as far as they mm-hmm. made it last year. I'm not even going to say they win the Super Bowl. Let's just say they get to the game and he has surgery after that. You're looking at he's not ready by the beginning of next season. If yeah. it's going to take the full six months, you know, he's he's going to miss training camp. He's going to have to get back into football shape before he can go on the field. He might miss the beginning of the 2022 season, if, you know, should he be with the Buccaneers. But, you know, if, if he's with anybody, you're looking at, at him missing the beginning of the following year. So hats off to, to JPP for fighting through this. We know how important it is to him. We know how important it is to the Buccaneers to try to get back and, and win another championship. But you you also have to – take a look at the other side and say, you know, how much long-term damage is this going to cause him trying to fight through and, and try to win another championship? Yeah, no, it, it's true. And it's no secret that getting to the quarterback has been one of the biggest issues of the first half. Now they've looked better, but not having a healthy JPP is going to be a problem long-term with this team reaching the Super Bowl. He's a, he's a key piece there. So, you know, having said that, uh, Joe Tryon has been learning underneath everybody for months now, and you're hoping that by the back half of the season, he's not so much of a rookie anymore. So we'll see how that develops, and we'll see how much Joe Tryon gets in the games. That is certainly something to keep an eye on, is watching his snap count versus JPPs and when they decide to unleash JPP and if they try to mitigate his minutes. Absolutely. Minimize, minimize his minutes. Right, right. Uh, and, and if nothing else, that's going to give Joe Tryon Shoinka some some additional reps. It's going to start to get him even better because you know you can only you can only get so much better in practice. It's going to take those live game situations yep. for him to take his game up to the next level. Um, if any of our viewers or uh, or listeners are also having some sleepless nights or reeling a little bit or hurting from some of these gas prices. We got some help for them with an incredible app for everybody that buys gas, and that is Get Upside. Our listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use promo code TOUCHDOWN and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon 
on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Do not pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the app for free. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN to get up to 50 cents a gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 a month in cash back and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime using your bank account, your PayPal. You can redeem it for e-gift cards for places like Amazon. Just download the free Get Upside app and use promo code TOUCHDOWN. Segment two here of the Locked On Bucks podcast, and we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or first watch every day. If you haven't checked us out on YouTube, please do so. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Hit the little ring a ling a ding bell. And, ring a ling a ding bell. Uh, yeah, you'll get notified every time a new episode drops because, spoiler alert, we tend to drop our episodes on YouTube the night before they get dropped on your podcast app. So if you want that uh, that early access, you got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. But Evan, we're going to talk a little bit about the playoff picture because that's what we do here. Yesterday, David and I talked mock drafts. Today, you and I, we're going to talk playoff picture, even though we're only halfway through the year. And the thing that I want to kind of stress is, you know, you and I kind of hammered it over and over and over last week that the Buccaneers need one of those top two seeds. That's really the goal there. If you're not going to get the buy, you at least want to make sure that you're home for every game, except potentially the final one where, uh, where you would have to go visit the one seed. But you take a look at what happened through the landscape of the NFL over, over the course of the weekend, you had the Packers lose, you had the Rams lose, you had the saints lose, you had the Cowboys lose. So the Buccaneers without doing anything, are now in a better position than they were one week ago. But you take a look at the top two competitors, really, for for the Buccaneers, because they have the the head-to-head tiebreaker with Dallas. Mm -hmm. They do not have the head-to-head tiebreaker with the Rams. They still need the Cardinals to drop a couple more games, which the Cardinals have a pretty favorable schedule. But over the course of the next month, we're talking about the Buccaneers facing the Washington football team, the New York Giants, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Atlanta Falcons. It is well within the realm of possibility the Buccaneers go 4-0 over the course of the next four games, the toughest test obviously being that road game against the Indianapolis Colts. But taking a look at the Cardinals, who are still in the number one spot now, over the next four weeks, they're facing the Carolina Panthers at home. They get the Seattle Seahawks at home, but should have Russell Wilson back by then. Then they're at Chicago and they're home against the Rams. Take a look at the Rams. They're at San Francisco, at Green Bay, home against Jacksonville, at Arizona. So you have the Cards with three of four at home. You have the Rams with three of four on the road. The Cardinals facing one team as of right now that has a a record above 500, and that's the Rams, whereas the Rams have to travel to Lambeau, should have Aaron Rodgers back by then. Uh, Rogers could be back this weekend. So the path to number one is looking more and more difficult. The, the more the Cardinals keep winning. Yeah. And, and by the way, the Buccaneers and the Cardinals both have, uh, the top five easiest schedules remaining per winning percentage. So, uh, the, the, the Buccaneers have the fourth easiest, the Cardinals have the fifth easiest, uh, Green Bay has the seventh easiest. Dallas is right outside the top ten. So a lot of those teams that are that are at the top in the NFC, it's it's a pretty soft schedule for them the rest of the way. The only team that, that doesn't necessarily have that luxury are the Rams, who are the the ninth hardest schedule remaining, and the Saints, who are kind of right there in the middle at the twelfth hardest schedule remaining. Um, yeah, you got to take care of business. Uh, Playing the Bills at home is going to be a challenge despite losing to the Jags last week. We're just going to chalk up week nine as, as a huge outlier and ignore that it ever happened. Um, and then, you know, you got to play the Saints again, which I expect to be a better matchup. Uh, this team is going to be – it's going to be nice to see a motivated, pissed-off Buccaneers team at home. So mentally, right. I'm already preparing for a win in that one. Um, 
it's just tough because uh, the Buccaneers outside of that Dallas game, which was messy, but albeit, um, you know, facing a great team and the Cowboys, again, despite what we saw last week, has not performed well against good teams. You know, they, they just have not. So they need to prove to themselves that when they have those marquee games coming up, the, the handful that they have, that they can perform. And, and that's even showing up to a Monday night football game against the Giants. You know, that's a big stage. You know, all the eyeballs are on you. That's a game that you can get up for. And and that's what I what I need to see. I, I do believe that they could totally be, you know, 10 and 2 by the time they, they get to that Bills game or whatever, you know, what might have you. But um, having said that, it's just they got to take care of business, which they've done all season long. And a lot of these other NFC teams have done that as well. You and I have talked. There's about six rock-solid NFC teams, and then there's a huge drop-off after that. I mean, the seventh seed is going to be garbage for all intents and purposes. I mean, now I think the seventh seed uh, are the Falcons. Yeah. So the Falcons, who are four and four, mind you, which oddly enough, they're three and one on the road. They're only lost to the Buccaneers. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is just, it is so top heavy in the NFC. There is just such a cutoff and the cutoff lands after six teams. So that's what you and I harp on that, you know, the Buccaneers need to either get that by or they need to get the two seeds so that they can essentially, essentially, you know, get to the next round in fairly short order. I'm sure they'd be like a double digit favorite or close to it in that matchup. Uh, but, you know, we saw last year with the Washington football team, even though that was on the road, that sometimes that can be the toughest game because you, you kind of you kind of take it a little bit for granted. So in the end, I'm really confident that the Bucks are going to be winning the division. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a hiccup along the way. I, in my head, am going to count the Bills as an L, just based on what I've seen thus far with the team. And so, we're, we're going to go from there. No, I, I, and, and to, to that point, it does seem like the Bills have been figured out a little bit, like that offense, similar to what is happening with Mahomes. Yeah. Uh, cover two defense right now is all the rage, and it's working, and I don't know why – all of a sudden cover two is just this phenomenon where elite quarterbacks can't figure it out, but that seems to be the go-to for defensive coordinators and it's working. Uh, it's working wonders. So uh, we, we saw it by the way uh, that cover two against Brady and the bucks and that, that pick uh, to, to end the game, that was a cover two look. So yeah, that's just something to, we can analyze uh, deeper for another time. Yeah, but if you're a Buck fan, Nothing to worry about. Uh, in the end, it's about getting healthy. This team is going to make the postseason, and I would be really shocked that they would not win the division, which means they should have, at minimum, one home game uh, in the playoffs, which is something they didn't have last year. Right. Yeah, and, and all jokes aside, obviously – the Bills had no business losing to to Jacksonville. I blame. What happens? Any you know, Levante right. David said it. Any given Sunday, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care how talented you are. If you do not bring it, these are NFL players. If you think that you're going to sleepwalk to a win against a team, it's not going to happen. You're going to lose. You will lose. I I blame Peyton and Eli for having Josh Allen on their show. The Manning, yeah, and that's that's one hundred percent valid. <laughs> Um, real quick, but before we get to our final segment, taking a look at the Cardinal schedule, you, you, you mentioned their strength of schedule. You can find a couple of losses here. If, if the Cardinals were to stumble, because they do have the Seahawks twice, they do have the Rams, they do have the Colts and they do have the Cowboys. So I think a lot of their strength of schedule is hindered on the fact that they face the winless lions and then they get the Bears and the Panthers. So yeah, and it's the fact that the Seahawks have been terrible without Russell Wilson, right? right. I mean, they, they weren't great with him, but you know, without him, they've been even worse. So you know, that's their winning percentage. As I said, it's based on winning percentage. So the Seahawks stink right now. They they certainly are not that easy of a team on the schedule, but you know, the numbers are the numbers. So that's where it is right now, and it, it can fluctuate in the future. Absolutely. Well, one thing that is always 
the one seed around here is Built Bar. And you know that I love Thanksgiving, all the goodies, all the fixings, but I hate that pumpkin pie. So I'm going to go to a Built Bar when it comes time mm. for dessert. I might dip it in Cool Whip. I don't know. It's worth a try because I do love Cool Whip. But if you want a yummy dessert that isn't so full of calories and sugar, it is the perfect time for Built Bars, the new holiday dessert. You can feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end. Most Built Bars are only 130 calories with four grams of sugar and plenty of protein. Low calorie, low carb, low fat, high protein, covered in 100% Real chocolate built bars are a great option when you're hungry. If that turkey isn't done soon enough and you got the grumblies going, you don't want to starve yourself. The grumblies. You want to make sure the metabolism's going a little bit so that you can eat more of the turkey and the potatoes and the stuffing and the corn souffle and, and whatever else. So go ahead and grab a built bar or two. I recommend the blueberry muffin, but there are plenty of other flavors out there. You know, peanut butter brownie, mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, raspberry. They're all there. But there's also new surprises all month long with limited time flavors arriving at Built.com regularly. So you want to check often, but you especially want to check on Built Bar Black Friday. Mark your calendar. Black Friday will be a huge event with all kinds of surprises. Just go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your order. Again, Promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off at Built.com. Wrapping things up here on a WTSP Wednesday edition of the Locked on Bucks podcast. James Yarko, Evan Klosky at Yarko underscore Bucks at E. Klosky, WTSP. And before... Anybody comments or tweets at us. I forgot to say this as a disclaimer at the very beginning of the show. We are recording this before anything involving Odell Beckham Jr. has occurred. It is it is currently a little bit before 1 o'clock in the afternoon as we're doing this. He's expected to clear waivers at 4 o'clock. We don't know where he's going, where he's landed. So if it's pertinent information for the Buccaneers, that's why it's not here right now. Because we don't know. However, if we knew, we would also probably be playing the lottery, Evan. Um, ha, uh, a hot take. I don't think Odell matters. To any team. I, I, I'm with you. I am astounded that people are still calling him a top 10 wide receiver. I would be hard to squeeze him into the top 25, let alone the top 10. But he could end up in the division. I think the Falcons are a good landing spot. I think the Saints make a lot of sense. So if he were to land on one of those teams, I feel that that information would be important for, for our listeners, but I don't think he makes a huge impact no matter where he goes. Uh, you know, there's, there's only one wide receiver taken in that draft that can do boat parties the right way. And that's Mike Evans. So moving on to the, uh, to the Washington football team game, this weekend, Evan, we're back into our predictions for the game. Well, your predictions, I will give mine at a at a later time. We're going to kick things off with your predictive player of the game. Who's going to explode this week? Who's going to really help spark a, uh, I don't know if you're picking the Buccaneers. I assume you are, but who would spark a potential Buccaneers victory for you? Yeah, uh, spoiler alert, I am going to pick the Bucs. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to go right to Mike Evans. Um, I think Brady really flubbed up against the Saints. And I think mentally he checked out of Mike Evans because he was going up against Lattimore. And Brady had it in his head. He was going to spray the ball elsewhere. Um, after the game, Bruce Arian said that Mike Evans was pretty much open all night. That Brady didn't throw it his way more than he could have. And there were, I mean, there were a lot of times that he had his man beat and Brady just never gave him the time of day, i.e. the pick six at the end of the contest. So I find this to be a makeup scenario for Brady, an overcorrection maybe. Okay. Antonio Brown's not going to play. So I have a feeling that Brady is going to want to get back into the good graces of Mike Evans and he is going to pepper him with targets touchdown receptions, 
I think he's going to break uh, all stocks record this weekend and he will, he will dominate, uh, you know, two tutties, more than a hundred yards, eight plus receptions, Mike Evans, ride him in your daily fantasy leagues, uh, DraftKings, whatever. I don't know, you know, just let it rip Mike Evans. All right. What about your bold prediction? Uh, bold prediction is going to be, man, I did that one before. <laughs> uh, Terry McLaurin is going to be held to less than 50 yards receiving. Okay. With you, the uh, secondary, with the secondary banged up to what it is, uh, and him being the obvious option to exploit that, I think Todd Bowles will have a, a good strategy to at least take him out of the game. I do fear in this prediction, by the way, there's going to be some garbage time magic, which pushes him ahead of his numbers. But uh, having said that, I think to a larger point to the bowl prediction, he's going to be a non-factor in this contest. I mean, you sprinkled that magic on the Chicago Bears' entire receiving core, so I'm going to trust that you uh, you get it done again this week with uh, with Terry McLaurin, who I love. I absolutely love watching that he's guy awesome. football. He's he's so good, and he's just stuck on such a bad football team. All right, your score prediction, good sir. What are, are is it going to be tight? Is this a blowout? Is this a, an angry Bucks team taking advantage of a terrible? Uh, Washington defense. What? How do you see this one going? Uh, I'm going to go 30 to uh, 31 to 20 Buccaneers, and I I think it's going to be really more 31 13 and or 31 six, and then you know at the end of this game, Washington football. You know the Buccaneers play a little prevent. They let them get you know let them get down the field a couple of times, make them feel good about themselves, and. It looks a little bit closer than it should have. Betters will be nervous with that nine and a half, ten and a half spread line, whatever it is. But um, no, I think you're going to see a locked in Bucks team. Penalties are going to be down. I, you know, I can make that another bold prediction. By the way, I'm going to go three. Or, I can go three or less penalties. That will be another one. So I'll, I'll, I'll do double the bold prediction. We didn't get to do one during the bye week. There's two bold predictions one week. Watch out. There three we go. or less penalties i think we're going to see a real disciplined team out there they based on last year how they came out post bye week i'm going to think that they're going to do the same thing i, I don't know if they're going to run the table the entire way to win a super bowl but uh, i do think that this is a veteran group and we are going to see a, a locked in squad no pun intended uh facing the washington football team on sunday to get them back on the right track because they've had that dirty taste of a loss in their mouth for two weeks now. Yep, absolutely. I spoiler alert, I will have them comfortably uh covering the spread when I give my score prediction and I will do so on tomorrow's crossover episode because I'm doing that with Chris Russell of Locked On Washington Football Team because David has to abstain. He's got I, to abstain? Yeah, well, cuz he's the also the co-host of Washington. I know. Football. I just figured that like I would like what I want is like David in one screen and then David in another screen and then he what? runs over, says something, runs back over, talks to himself and he does that. And that's a crossover episode. I wanted that in the worst way. The network said, no, you need to have James and Chris do the crossover this oh, week. So, I, I know. That, not my bosses. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. So uh, Evan, Bro, what do you think? Come after me. <laughs> what do you have on tap uh, over there at 10 Tampa Bay dot uh, com and 10 Tampa Bay the channel? That's right. Yeah. So 10 Tampa Bay dot com. You know, we got all your, your bucks covered. But on top of that, lightning rays when pertinent. Uh, the Rowdies are in the playoffs right now. It looks like they're going to go to a USL championship again. They are crushing opponents all season long. Uh, but but most importantly, Sundays, 1130. My guy, Simeon Rice, joins us for the Blitz every weekend he's going to be in studio this week uh he's on vacation so he's going to be coming back from mexico having a having a fun time with us uh we had a great bye week episode we'll have another great one uh this weekend but you know between big picture topics nitty gritty about the buccaneers uh we we really go in depth on current events what's going on uh, in pop culture so it's it, it's really good time so check us out 10 Tampa Bay, 
uh, the channel and timbay.com. We got you covered on both. Love it. Love it. And my son doesn't have any games this Sunday. He, we were supposed to have one. So that means I get to watch the blitz as it right. happens. I don't have to, I don't have to rewind to the DVR like <laughs> I have been in, uh, in recent weeks. So looking forward to that as always. And of course you can check out everything that I'm doing over at bucksnation.com. Make sure that you're following along on Twitter at locked on bucks at jarco underscore bucks at e wtsp at bucks underscore nation. Send us your voicemails to 813 444 5841. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, be good to one another. And we thank you so much for joining us right here at locked on bucks.